Hello friends, welcome back to the shop and welcome to a video, um, maybe two videos, I'm, I'm not sure yet, on Nimrod lighters. Uh, these are two Nimrod lighters that you see before you, two different uh, models. And the lighters have a very interesting history. I know you've probably seen these guys around, they're very identifiable. Uh, but these are also Nim Nimrods, uh, made by the same company, and there's a couple others that we'll talk about. But the history is really interesting. So these were made by the Ashley Ward Company. Ashley Ward was founded in 1908, and it was a screw manufacturer. So the company made uh, screws for many different applications. In 1946, Ashley Ward patented the Nimrod pipe lighter, and that was this, this version that you see right here. Uh, this was called the Sportsman. And the patent was granted in 1947, and they began producing this. Now, a couple of things regarding the, the, this lighter. The name of the company, uh, the name of the lighter, rather, is the, the origins are kind of lost in time. Uh, there are a couple of theories as to why they were called Nimrod. One is that the uh, biblical character Nimrod was an inspiration. So Nimrod was a... Uh, great hunter in the Bible, and it's uh, thought that perhaps because this lighter was, you know, which was called the Sportsman, was windproof and could be used outdoors, uh, perhaps it would be used by hunters, and therefore the Nimrod name was appropriate. Uh, another theory, and one that I kind of favor just because I like the the history here, is that since Ashley Ward made screws that were used in the building of the Nimrod fighter planes used by the British in World War II, uh, that the, the lighter was actually named in deference to that history and that it uh, represents uh, you know, their, their contribution to the war effort. So it could be either of those, it could be neither. We really don't know. And there's a lot we don't know in terms of, of the Nimrod history. Uh, I mentioned the patent in 1947. I will put the patent number down in the description because I know some folks like to look at patents. Uh, unfortunately, they used the same patent number on this lighter. So we don't know when this model, which is the Nimrod Commander, was conceived or first made or, or anything really. We, we just know that uh, they were made by Ashley Ward sometime after 1947. So they made uh, four models of lighter, and I only have two, and, and those are the ones that are before you, but the other two are variations on the theme. So the Sportsman was the first lighter, and uh, this is this unique design that is sort of reminiscent of a nut on a bolt, and that's kind of uh, a throwback to the, to the company's origins. Uh, lights by, by pulling it out and pulling as you're pulling it you're rolling that striking wheel so unique little mechanism there the, this is the sportsman the other version of the sportsman is called the executive uh, so this one is in a, a polished aluminum finish the executive was in a gold anodized finish and it had a lizard grip here in place of this rimming uh, so very, very stunning looking lighters when when you can find them in, in good condition the other lighter that I have here is uh, the Nimrod Commander. Now the Commander is done in a satin finish and there's a companion, you know, higher end uh, lighter in this form which is called the uh, Admiral. And the Admiral is, uh, they, they term it an engine turned chrome finish. It's basically chrome and it's got some, some ribbing in it uh, and I'll, I'll put pictures in here so you can, you can see all of them. Uh, these lighters uh, have a lot of similarities to Zippo's, and I'll, I'm going to take it apart in a bit, and I'll, I'll tell you more about the, the internal workings and everything. But interestingly, this, this design actually predates the Zippo, uh, the Zippo insert design. Uh, so these are often called Zippo knockoffs, but they're not. Uh, they actually are uh, completely independently conceived uh, version. And you can see on this one, there's a real nice example of the Nimrod logo and the patent number there. Uh, unfortunately, any evidence of that has worn off on the uh, the sportsman that I have. So these were made uh, be again beginning in 1947. They were still being sold in 1960, and they were selling at a rate of one million lighters per year. So there's a lot of these out there, and you know if you're interested, look at eBay. You'll be able to find them. 
uh, you, they sometimes go for a fairly high price if they're uh, you know unused or in very very good condition but uh, the, the ones that are kind of beat up work just fine so let's talk a bit about the commander first uh, so I, I bought both of these as project lighters I thought I was gonna have to bring both of these back to life it turns out the, the work on this one was so simple that I, I don't even need to, to show it uh, so the lighters have a sort of spring-loaded top similar to, to what you find with Zippos. And the one weak point, and something to look for if you're, if you're looking for a Nimrod Commander, is this uh, pinned-on design. You can see there's a, there's a pinned pin here that holds that top in place. That's a weak point, and very often you will find these without the, the lids or with the lids off or loose. And I imagine you could, you could press that pin out and put a new one in. I don't know. But uh, it's just something to keep an eye on if you're if you're shopping for these. Uh, I've got a very unique chimney design here. Uh, you can see it's kind of got some stippling on it. Uh, wick comes up through the middle, and this is a pipe lighter. Now, in in the literature, they they show that you can their ad literature you can use these to light cigars and cigarettes as well. Uh, but it was really designed as a pipe lighter where you would be drawing the flame down through this into the pipe. Uh, these come apart. They're, you know, typical insert design, very similar to Zippo, but again, uh, not conceived uh, as a as a knockoff, but but independently. And you can see here on the inside of the insert, there's uh, some some wordage here, and it says Nimrod Commander. It has the patent number, and then it says Cinti, Ohio, USA. And those are the only markings on the pipe. Uh, and I'm not sure if I said this earlier, but there's unfortunately no way to date any of these pipes because they all use the same patent number. They didn't have any unique markings like Zippo has. So this could have been made in 1947. It could have been made on, in the last run. We just don't know. So it's got this uh, nice, you know, insert sort of style. One of the things I really like about it is unlike the Zippo, um, hopefully you'll be able to see, there's a little ridge right here that actually fits over the, the lower part and that just provides a little bit more seal. Now most of the fluid is lost through the wick so it, it doesn't matter much. Uh, these don't seem to hold the fluid longer than a, than a Zippo would. Um, on the bottom we've got a felt pad. Uh, the felt pad is not held in place like it is on the Zippo so it can completely remove. You do have that little uh, divot there for uh, keeping an extra flint and down here you've got very similar to a zippo you've got a flint chamber with a with a screw off top and there's a spring in there the, the, the flint is spring loaded and you've got packing and you can sort of see a little bit of the wick sticking out right right there now when I got this lighter it it sparked fine uh, in fact I'm still using the the flint that was in the lighter when I got it uh, I, it was all packed and everything, but it wasn't working and I put fluid in it and it would not light. And oddly enough, all I had to do is remove the packing. The flint, the, the, the wick was all packed way up here and then all the packing was on top of it. So the wick wasn't getting any fluid. So I just kind of snaked the wick up through the, through the packing, pushed the packing back in, filled it with fluid, and it works just fine. So I really didn't have to do anything to this other than rearrange the, the wick a little bit. And I'll strike it just once here. And you can see it, it works very well. Um, I like these. They, they just feel a bit more substantial to me than the Zippo. And I love my Zippos, but, but this is actually a really, really nice letter. So that's the commander, uh, and the Admiral is, is very similar, it just has a different finish. The Sportsman is a different story altogether, and this is the one that we're going to have to be doing some work on. So, as I mentioned earlier, the way you, op you, you open this and strike it simultaneously, so by pulling with your finger on the wheel, you're rolling the wheel as it pulls out. There should be a wick in there, there should be a flint that's, and obviously there's not. Um, you can't take these apart, it turns out. So the original patent actually had a little button so that you could remove this part, but I don't know how this comes off, and from everything I've read, it doesn't. 
Uh, I'm going to someday find one that's sort of beyond repair and see if I can't just cut it open to understand how that's held in place because I really can't see anything that would hold it in place here. Uh, but anyway, we, we, we're not going to be taking this apart. We are going to be doing some just basic maintenance on this to get it working again. Uh, down here is the fuel chamber and this large screw-in end is what conceals the fuel chamber. Again, a really nice design. Um, this actually has space here for an O-ring. And I don't know for certain if an O-ring is supposed to be there, but it sure seems like a good idea. So I'm going to get an O-ring for that and, and see if I can still screw this down. And if, if so, that would be a nice addition to this, uh, simply because it would help seal up the, the uh, lighter fluid. You can see there's cotton packing in there, and that's all going to have to come out because there's no wick. So we'll just start taking it out. And it looks to me like the last owner might have been using cotton balls instead of, uh, well, for all I know, uh, Nimrod used cotton balls. I don't know. But we're going to take that all out. And then on this end, we've got the screw that holds the flint in place and there should be a spring and there's no spring uh, that tube is completely empty so that's a challenge we have to replace the spring we're gonna have to put a flint in there um, we're gonna have to clean up this wheel because as you know from Zippos these wheels can get pretty gummed up and carbonized and, and that can be an issue we're gonna have to put a wick in it and repack it and it should be ready to go at that point. So I got to gather some supplies. I got to get uh, some uh, new packing and a wick. Uh, I've got to find a spring and, and uh, some way to push on the flint because just a piece of spring isn't going to do it. And then we'll, uh, we'll we'll come back and once we got those parts, we should be able to put this all together and strike it. So folks, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of history on Nimrod, and that you'll tune in for the next video, which will be the only other video in this series, where we um, get this guy working again. So thanks for joining me. If you like this, please uh, hit the like, thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, and you'll get updates on uh, when new videos post. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. So thanks all, and we'll see you in the next video.